Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I want to welcome everybody to Monday 7.30 Ginger Cookie Crumbs, uh, which is our regular feature on YouTube now. We've decided this is a great spot to say hi to everybody, and for those of you who are living in the States, uh, happy 4th of July. Um, I think it was Happy Canada Day a couple days ago, so we want to say Happy Canada Day to the Canadians. And, um, you know, this is fun. We're going to do something really kind of different today. Usually on Cookie, cookie Crumbs, we answer a question, and we're going to answer a question and do a painting at the same time. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to move cookie crumbs. I'm going to show you the painting we're going to do. How cool is that? We're going to, I'm going to show you how to do this abstract. And we're going to talk about how to use a round brush. See, there's a couple of round brushes here. We're going to show you how to use the correct way to use a round brush, which is kind of cool because we haven't talked a lot about that. And while we're doing that, while we're just uh, you know chatting away, I want to introduce uh, John Little, who is our moderator, the other partner in GingerCookLive.gallery. I'm in Houston, Texas. John is in Michigan. And what happens is I am connected to John by this nifty phone and earplugs. And when you ask a question, then John reads it and at some point interrupts the dialogue, which is tough to do sometimes. And I'm sorry, John, I know it is. And then he tells me what your question is. And this is, a, in case you were wondering, this is a 8 by 16 canvas panel, but you could do this on anything. In fact, I think this would be spectacular, really large. But, you know, for the, for the purpose of how to do this, it doesn't really matter. I would love to see this about 36 inches wide and, you know, about, to, you know, two feet, you know, long, about two feet wide. I think it would be just really wonderful. All right, so what the colors we're going to want today are white, if you can guess, both blues, thalo blue, and um, ultramarine blue. And again, we had a question. I'm going to answer this again for Marty. What is the difference between the two blues? If you remember, ultramarine blue is um, kind of the color of your blue jeans. Think of the Marine Corps, West Coast, Atlantic Ocean. When you mix it with yellow, you get army green. Okay, well, and, and thalo blue is, uh, starts with a pH. Think of the Pacific Ocean, more tropical. Mix it with uh, yellow, you get a uh, bright green, okay? And you can never get this color green using uh, uh, ultramarine blue. So the, just uh, those are some questions. We, we'll answer those all the time because people forget. I tell you and you forget. It's okay, I forget all kinds of stuff. All right, so now we're going to come up with cad, uh, cad yellow medium and also yellow oxide. We've got a lot of colors in here. Oxide, oh, some brands it's called yellow ochre. And then we want a, a, a cad red medium. A lot of colors in this. Well, if you notice anything about my artwork, it's nothing but colors. For instance, last week on our live classes, we did this nifty parrot. And look at the beautiful colors in that. I mean, I love colors. I'm all about colors. And uh, this, this is now in our library for our members. Cad red medium. And let's do a little um, uh, dazzling purple. D-I-O-X-A-Z-I-N-E, purple, not just any old purple, but just Zaza, P-U-R-P-L-E, purple, okay, got the purple here, I guess I could zoom in, not that you need to see me write all this down, Zaza purple, but I'm giving you a chance to get it too, and burnt umber, and um, maybe some burnt sienna, we'll see, we're about in the last legs of that, but I know how to make it if I'm out. S-I-E-N-S-I-E-N-N-A, burnt sienna. Okay, so while we're putting those paints out, I want to just uh, tell you that we've had a terrific week. Uh, incidentally, when you're putting white out, um, when you put white out, uh, make a log. Okay, if you guys know that, make like a little log. Everything else that goes out about as much as you'd put on a tube of tooth toothpaste. And I'm using professional acrylics. Right, because these stay up, people don't you know. People have never heard of Matisse, and if you, if you, uh, there are an Australian paint. Apparently, there is a, a, a an art club in England that's made arrangements with Matisse to be able to get them there. If you want that information, I have it. You email me at gingercooklive.gallery, and you're wondering if you live in the UK. I can give you the link. I don't know that it's. I can't verify that they've actually done it, but apparently they're supposed to. So here's my website, gingercooklive.gallery, and. We've recently, we're all about answering questions on Monday night. So once I put out the colors, I'm going to just answer some questions. Here's some phthalo blue. And one of the questions I've gotten was, and it was a very interesting one, was if we're 
if you have a canvas and you want to paint over a picture, you know not everything we do is genius. I mean, occasionally we think it is at the time, and then as you as you progress in your painting, you look at some painting and go, gosh, I hate that. I can't believe I even painted that, or what was I thinking, or whatever reason you don't like it. Um, and you want to paint over it. So I've had the question, do you have to gesso over a canvas? Then do you just gesso over it? What do you do? And, you know, the, unless, if you've done a bunch of tape lines where the tape ridges show, you might have to, okay? But other than that, and then sand it. But mostly, I would say, no, we don't do that. Here's the yellow oxide. And um, I'm going to just put the cat out, cat yellow. I kind of did these backwards, but that's okay. As long as I can see that one's a cad yellow. And um, let's see, let's put out a little purple. And we, I, this isn't a big surprise. If you watch me, we use the same colors all the time. This, there's no big, I, I do that because I don't want to blindside you. It's not that there's not some neat colors at the art store, but we use these all the time. I had a woman one day explain to me, it's very bizarre, that she, you know, 50 years ago or whatever, she'd gone to some sort of, uh, art seminar and this woman had said she just used these three colors and for the next 50 years that's all she used. Well for heaven's sakes these are the colors I'm using. You see another color you like says oh well, Ginger doesn't use it it can't be good. That's dumb. Let's not let's not get caught in that loop. I'm just saying that you can make pretty much everything with these colors but you know there's no reason if you find a green or you find some color that you like that makes you happy buy it. Just the thing I'm going to tell you to maybe avoid is a black because um uh, I, I think when you start mixing black with colors, that what happens is is that um, it 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 dulls them so much. It just dulls them so much. And you know, maybe you like that though. So you know, I guess it's a all preference. All right. So we've got a contest running on this picture. When I painted it, I I thought we needed a title, so I went up on Facebook. I'm Ginger Cook ninety two on Facebook. If you want to friend me, and um. And I asked some, some people uh, a couple, few days ago for a title, and a bunch of people sent one in. We've got all the titles now we need. We had like about 25, I think. So if you go to gingercooklive.gallery and you go under Contact Us, you will see um, an art contest. And so I want you to vote for the title you like best. If it's your title, no, no reason why you can't vote for yourself. We're going to have two winners. The, um, the title that... The pick, you know, the title that gets the most votes will be the title of this painting. And then if there's, say, 20 people voted for it, you guys will then, and so the person who thought of the title will, 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 will get um, one of our downloadable lessons. You just tell us which they are. That's what you're going to get. One of our downloadable lessons on gingercooklive.gallery. You'll get one of those, and you can pick out the one you want. And then we'll do a random drawing, say, out of the 20 or 25 people that voted uh, for this, uh, for the title, and you will also be put, and we'll do a, you know, we'll, we'll do a random drawing to pick you, and then the guy that, whoever thought up the title will also get something. So there you go. That, did I explain it, John? And when is the, when is the voting over? Do we have a date when it's over? Next Saturday, next week, next week. So, okay, so I found, I was rummaging around, and I found this painting. I don't know if you see it or not. But I decided we were going to sacrifice this painting for the good of explaining that you could paint over anything. How's that? And you're going, really? Yeah, I'm going to do it. So now that we, um, we've we decided to do that, we're going to take some, uh, just, I don't know, maybe a large brush, say like this. It's a pretty big brush. I'm not sure what number it is. Ruby, satin, silver. It's prob silver is probably number 12. And I'm going to just um, dampen the brush, and then I'm going to wipe it off on a paper towel. I don't want water. I'm going to, I'm going to, then I'm going to take burnt umber, and I'm just going to start painting over this whole thing. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Is that ultramarine blue? That was... Oh, I didn't put it out. What is that? That must be purple. I thought I put ultramarine blue out. I put... Um, purple there too, I think. It's okay. Put it over here. So, tiny bit of ultramarine blue with this. And I, what I want is a very nice dark background. Now the advantage, now you'll notice that I'm not doing anything. I think I even have a little purple in this. That's pretty. I want a really dark background. You can kind of see that, right? And I'm going to just paint this whole thing over. 
you can do that. You're going, really, I can do that? In fact, usually I just turn the thing upside down and start painting. But for the purpose of our demonstration, we're just going to show you that we're just going to get this really dark and dry it very well. This is the key. We're going to dry this very well, and then we're going to show you how to do this abstract, which I think is kind of fun. And the thing about an abstract is no two, don't sweat it if it doesn't look like mine. This is not even important because no two abstracts will ever look the same. They're almost like, I think a, a, a scientist could have a field day with uh, with just, uh, you know, where people, because it kind of, kind of comes from, you know, um, kind of from within. Abstracts are just sort of almost mood expressions, okay? And some people may be totally, uh, you know, may totally appeal to them. Now notice how I'm painting right over this, no problem. And let's see, I'm looking for my burnt umber, which I had a minute ago. Here it is. I'm just going to put it right out on the, here, how did that happen? Open that up. Okay, so here's a little more burnt umber. And since we're using that, I'll just put that there. Okay, so here's my burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue with it. Now, I've got a nice dark base for this abstract. This is what I want, nice dark base. Do, would you have to start with the dark base? No. But this is what I had to paint this over, and that's probably, I don't want to start with a light base. I'm going to just start with this dark one. Now, and if some of the painting underneath shows through, I don't care. It's going to be an abstract. Some of the colors show through, that's fine. Now look, see how beautifully that just repainted? And now this is ready to go and paint anything on. And, um, you know, again, you do not need to re-gesso something. Okay, so what happens to this brush? This brush now goes in water. And then we're going to take a hair dryer and we're going to dry this entire thing. And uh, John, in order for you not to have to listen to the noisy hair dryer, uh, which, you know, I don't want you to have to do that. Let me just sort of flatten some of this out. Got a little high. Uh, John will uh, mute it. So one, two, three, hair dryer. I think we're pretty dry here. Just kind of testing it out. Looks pretty good. Okay, nothing's coming off on my fingers. All right, so now we've got, uh, this is our, our canvas. Now I'm going to just kind of show you our picture here. If we can kind of, I'm going to just kind of do it like this so you can see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the outside edges and work our way in toward the center. All right, that's the big plan. Now again, uh, we don't necessarily have to have it exactly like this, but the idea is that when you do an abstract, um, you know, we want some colors. We want want some blended colors. And there's a lot of different ways to paint something. I'm just going to show you um, how I painted this. How's that? So I've got two round brushes here. This is um, a Signet number no. 8. Um, it's a, Rob, a you know Robert Simmons round. And, um, you know, that's part of the Simply Simmons line. And it's fairly stiff. You don't want a soft one. This has to be fairly stiff. You can go bigger than this. Here's another one. Um, I just happen to have, um, it's by Creative Mark, it's a number 30. It's a little softer, but there's more bristles. So we'll play with both of those, see which ones we like. Now, I'm not going to wet the brush. Now, that's the interesting thing. I'm not going to wet the brush. I'm just going to 
roll the brush in some white paint, all right? And then I'm going to roll the brush in a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of, of burnt sienna, like that. Just kind of roll it. Now, here's how I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it like this with my hand open, finger like this. And instead of doing a Zorro thing where you're painting with the tip, you paint with this whole inch of the side, okay? You paint with the side of it. We're going to start up here like this, make circles. See what I'm doing? I'm making some circles. And I'm moving on like this. I'm making some interesting circles around here. Maybe I'll come down here and make some circles. Now, as I roll the brush around, let me just, I'm going to remove the painting now so I can show you. I don't have that big a range on this camera. As I roll the painting around like this, as I roll this around, I get different colors. So now I'm going to roll the picture. I'm going to just come back here and maybe roll it in a little burnt umber right here. And you always want to work the wet edges. Work the Always work in your wet edges. Roll the brush. Always get these edges. Stay out of the middle here. Stay out of that, like that. Now you can see, now let's see, let's do something else. Let's take a little bit of white, a little Bosnian purple, a little yellow, like that. Just You don't mix these, you just kind of roll your brush in them, like that. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to just come up here like that. I like that color, so I'm going to bring it over here. Barely touch it. Then I'm going to come this way. Barely touching this, working my edges. Now, that's an interesting bit of yellow. Maybe I'll pick some of that up and move it over here, move it over here. Now here's the trick. Oh, there, she's getting to the trick part, right? Take your brush, now wipe all the paint off like that. Just pinch all the paint off. Now, work this edge in, barely gent gently, work this edge into there. Just work your wet edges into the canvas now without picking up any more paint. Just kind of do this, something like that. Do you see how I'm doing it? Work that way up. Now that's this, this brush is fairly soft. I'm going to switch to the Simmons and let you see the difference. Um, this was this uh, Robert Simmons, and it's a number eight signet. So I, I think I might like it a little better. We'll see. So again, I'm going to roll it a little burnt sienna, a little white. I'm going to come over here like this. And uh, there we go. Yeah, I do think I like the stiffness of this much better than that softer one. Softer one kind of works, but it's not as effective. This is also a great brush, brush for clouds. You're doing clouds or round brushes, just great. Just imagine this was all clouds. Coming over here, putting a little of this brown back over in here. See that? So we're layering the colors and and allowing some of the underpainting to show through. Now, you could have done an, a gold, a, you know, maybe a red underpainting might have been pretty. Or a dark red. It doesn't have to be brown. I'm just saying that this is what we did today, okay? So that's nice. Now we're going to come over here and do something similar. Um, we're going to just come up into this corner. Question? Yes. Hi. So the question was, what do you think about painting on masonite board? Um, um, masonite board is, um, uh, the thing is, you can go to Home Depot, for instance, I think it's Home Depot, and you can get a big sheet of masonite board, you know, the size of, you know, big giant sheet of it, and they will cut it up for you. Did you know for free? So, for instance, I mean, you have to take it all. You can't just say, I want a little piece like this because it's cheap, and then you can keep the rest. you got to take it all home. So you can have them cut up some masonite. Here's some just plain color. That's no good. Um, let's take a little yellow oxide with that, okay? Now, I'm going to just move. Too much paint there, I'm going to move it around. All right, now, uh, here's a little yellow oxide. I'm going to move this around now. Wiping the paint off the brush, see that? And then I'm going to just work these edges in. That was over some purple I had here. Work that in here and bring this across. So the problem with masonite is that you need to gesso it, and it's not very archival. What we mean by archival is that it's the reason they did ampersand and some of these woods that you buy that are pretty expensive at the art stores that sometimes uh, chemicals from the wood leach through your paint. Um, so, you know, there's a debate about that. But you certainly, uh, uh, but I've painted on masonite board for custom things. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you could paint on it. And, and it it's, uh, depends, particularly if you want an interesting s size. Sure, why not? All right, so I'm going to take a little Dossian purple and a little yellow. I'm going to kind of gray that a little bit, a little burnt sienna, a little bit more purple, a little bit of white. All right, I'm going to come in here like this and make some sort of a purple-brown color. 
Now, why, why put yellow into purple? Well, um, purple is opposite yellow on the color wheel. Let's just talk about that. So if you need to tone down purple, you add yellow. It's just a simple thing. If you need to tone down uh, green, you add red. All right, so we're just going to keep coming around here like this. See how I'm painting this? And it's, uh, uh, okay, watch my arm. It is going like I'm plugged into some sort of machine. And I keep moving. You do not stay in one place. And I keep rolling the brush. Okay, now I'll take a little bit of burnt sienna here. Barely touch it. Come back over the top of this. Blend in another color. Do you see what I'm doing? Okay, maybe I'll leave some of this standing here. I'll leave maybe this little bit of, of, of uh, color here. Now, you do this in layers, okay? So this is a pretty good outside layer. I mean, we're pretty good with this. I mean, I'm not unhappy with this. Let me just show you the picture. I mean, it, it went fairly fast, don't you think? I mean, John's, I think John's surprised. Uh, it went fairly fast. Okay, so now we've got that. Now what? Well, what I would do, I think I'm going to retire this brush. This brush was just too soft, and it's kind of slayed out, and it didn't make me happy. Um, that's We're retiring that for the night. I'm going to keep the Simmons. We're going to take a minute, and we're going to dry this, all right? This is all done in layers. Hmm? This is a... This is an 8 by 16 canvas panel, but I'm just showing because I think this would be pretty, really large, okay? So I'm going to just take a second and dry this. as much all right so there you can see it that's that's we, we dried that now i'm not rinse my brush okay now i'm going to go into some maybe some um some oranges so i'm going to take a little cad red medium in yellow and make kind of an orange color and uh, that's pretty and i'm going to come up here like this maybe put a little tiny bit of white on my brush like that kind of soften that up and i'm going to add a new layer of color wasn't that pretty see we're going to come up here with a new layer of color kind of push this over here like that a little orange. Now, the, uh, I want to tell you guys that, that, that the question will come up, I'm sure, this, we leave the Monday broadcasts up. We leave the Monday broadcasts up, but we lo we have live broadcasts. Ginger Cook Live is live on Tuesday nights at 7.30, and I'm starting a new series. It's called The European Village, and I want to just, as I'm painting and along, I want to show you that. This is going to be tomorrow night. So this is, and I'm recommending you do these. This is a gallery wrap, six by eight little canvas. And I'm, if you're going to start the village, I recommend you do it on this because you can stand these straight up like this against a wall. See, I've even painted them on top. And they make a wonderful, there's going to be about t uh, 12 uh, little uh, pictures in the in the series. We've got, uh, we'll have a, uh, a hat, you know, some of the next ones coming up, there's going to be a hat shop. And then we're going to do a, a flower shop. So we've got some real cute ones coming up, and we're going to continue on with that. And we'll also have a mystery one, which will involve a contest, which we'll tell you about later. So um, as I continue on with my orange a little bit, here's a, here's a little lighter color that I've just found. I'm going to put on here like that. Okay, so you can see we're layering colors. So a little bit of yellow, cad red medium, like that. Maybe a teeny bit of purple to tone back the orange. And let's see what happens if we come up in here. Ooh, that's pretty. Now that's a lot of paint on the brush, so I'm going to move this over here like that, and I'm going to wipe the brush off, see that? And then I'm going to do something with this. So it's all in very thin layers. Um, uh, women kind of would get this. It's like putting blush on your face, you know what I mean? You don't want any hard edges, you know? You want to just soften out all these edges, kind of like that. See how we're just adding some color? And I'm going to say that's pretty... Um, Let's see, I'm going to, let's see, I think I want a mixing plate. At this point, I'm going to just take a plate for mixing. I'm going to take a little yellow and orange like this, and maybe a little bit of yellow oxide like that, and add to that. That's pretty. Maybe a little white like this. Um, let's see, a little tiny bit of purple over here, and white 
like that. Okay, so now I've got those three colors going. I'm going to just grab some of this. Ooh, that's nice. So we're starting to lighten things up. You can see how I'm going, lightening things up. Very little pressure. Think of steam, mist, water mist, something like that. We'll start to light, lighten up some of these colors. Um, maybe come over here. Ooh, that's brighter. See, added a brighter color right up in here like that. And just kind of stand back and look at it. We, I was doing a, a, my studio. I got a, another announcement. My studio in Texas, in in, in Texas, is now um, in my house for uh, classes, and I'm taking uh, students in my house. And one of the things that I've had some that we were teaching out of Jerry's for a long time, and one of the kind of mysteries to me was I tell people one of the things you could do is have in your studio go to Walmart get a ten dollar full length mirror and have it where you can position it behind your painting and every once in a while just turn around and look at what you've done and yeah, I've been blabbing about that forever nobody pays any attention and then I had the mirror in the studio and everybody said oh that's such a good idea wow I had no idea I'm gonna go get a mirror tomorrow wow you guys mirrors are helpful because you instead of having to stand back from your picture you just look at it in a mirror okay so here's a little kind of light purple up here like doing this kind of a light lighten something up up here I think I want a little more purple. Now I think another color I didn't put out, and I will, is is a napa crimson. Um, just feel like I could use that color, so I'm going to add that to my group of colors. Because if I add a little napa crimson to my purple, and then do a little white like this, and a little bit of that, there we go. And then, okay, there. I just wanted I wanted to warm this up a bit. So I'm going to put this color up in here, a little bit more white. Now, here we go. I'm sort of light, lightening up something here. Coming, Just see how the circles are going the whole time. Circles are going. Turn your brush over. Be, you know, just play with this a little bit. Put some classical music on. Close the door. Just enjoy yourself. See what happens. See what you can come up with. Just let your subconscious paint something with you. Kind of play with the colors. It's a really nice, very, very nice exercise in color and, you know, playing. Okay, so now I want to brighten up something in here. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, yellow oxide here like that. Let's just brighten. Let's just get something a little brighter. See, now we're going to start waking this up a bit. Um, is that showing up, John? Do I need to zoom in? Can you hear, can you hear me, John? Let's... Okay, so um, here's a little yellow. See, I'm going to just start pulling some brighter colors now in. Now, what do you do with that? Well, maybe I'll take it and put it over here. There you go. So start pulling out some colors here like that. Now, I'm leaving some edges now in a few places. I'm leaving a few little brighter edges. I want to come around and... There we go. Just... Pull some of that up. Hey, this is not going to look exactly like the one I had before. Because, I mean, a lot of times when you're doing things like this, I have this friend, his name's Stacy, and he's in Houston. He makes mad money selling abstracts. Just mad money selling abstracts. And people people like them, because if you do them in colors that people like, they, they, they're, they'll they decorate their offices with them. They don't say anything. You know, there's no political statement with an abstract. It's It's kind of fun. And um, and they and they get very drawn to the colors. So your trick is, you know, warm and cool colors. Uh, we've got ninety percent of this is warmer before we add the cool colors. And what do we mean by warm and cool colors? Well, what we what we mean is that um, here we're going lighter now. See that? Just in a couple places. Uh, what we mean is that that a warm color would be what you think red would be a warm color, right? Kind of hot. You think of and and ice blue and so forth. So when you when you play with warm and cool colors in a painting, you'll see that often warm and cool colors, and then the contrasting with the um, contrast it with um, with the complements. In other words, what looks what what looks absolutely nifty keen next to um, uh, turquoise is uh, don't all shout out at once. It's orange. Okay, so you see, I'm coming around here like that. Now I might come back with a little of my brown, burnt umber, 
Here, let's take a little burnt. Oh, let's, let's just take a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe. Uh, come back in here and just darken this over here a bit. Let me just let me see that. Come back here. A little bit of purple. Might want to come back and darken this corner just a bit. I can just see, kind of bring my eye in. This is my next layer of color that's coming on top. I'm going to kind of force that. Force the eye into the center when you darken the corners, just as a little tip. But you don't have to. I mean, I don't think in this one I did. Here's a little, maybe I'll even lighten this corner up here like that. And okay, just going to start lightening this up. You know, here we go. Just moving along like that. Oh, I have some great news. We got um, cinnamon and made it back safe and sound from California, which I was always happy to hear. They had a good road trip. So my grandkids had a great time at Disneyland and got to see Carl's Fad Caverns and everything. And John and I have had a great um, a, a time. Uh, John's been adding more stuff to the website all the time. And for those of you who have gone to gingercooklive.gallery, he's got a button if you're wanting to know what our catalog is like. If you go into our members' home and log in, we've got um, a great, you can just hit the word gallery and you'll see all our pictures. We have over 160 paintings now on our website. Every month, our subscription becomes a better and better deal. I, I don't know where you're going to get 100, uh, over 160 lessons for $24.95 a month. This is the lesson we're doing this week, okay? Let me just zoom back out. This is the you know European village, okay? That's that's our lineup for this week on gingercooklive.gallery, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. This is in the Thomas Kincaid style of painting, and then after that we've got uh, I love this. We we do everything from one cookie to um, five cookie lessons, and we try to keep some simple ones and some more complicated ones. This is Tortuga Surf. Don't you love this? Isn't this fun? And when we um, you know, this is just a happy summer beach thing, and this is not a hard drawing. It's a very simple box-shaped house, uh, you know, little shack. Very, very simple to do. Anybody can do this one. This is the lesson coming up next week. And then after that, we've got, I know people were into abstracts, so here's another one of these canvases, and we're going to do these horses, these, these abstract horses. And I'm telling you what, this is spectacular if you did this larger. And we're actually using some... Uh, actual gold uh, paint on this from Matisse. There's some gold paint involved. You see all these little highlights here and they kind of reflect in the light. Some gold paint. And we have the horses. And then everybody, this is, I'm telling you, July is the month. Every, July is the month. Everybody has been waiting for the lesson for this. And I decided to do it very nice and large. This is our garden steps. And this is, uh, the size of this is um, Oh, uh, I think it's um, 11 by 14. That's the size of our garden steps. And again, um, this is an absolute fun, you know, art lesson to do. Again, you're talking about the warm and cool colors, compliments, and so forth. So that's coming up um, at the end of July. So if you're thinking about uh, wanting to start painting and, you know, uh, come check out our gingercooklive.gallery. Come take a peek at what we're doing because it's kind of fun. Okay, so I've, I've kind of let this sit as we've been talking. And now I'm going to just, now I'm going to rinse my brush. I pretty much have to because I'm going to change colors. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit. And we're going to go into some of the cool colors now, as opposed to, you know, um, as the warm. So here, here I can kind of give you an idea. This, this is where, this is what we're going for. This is what we've got so far. Now we should probably... If we see all this gold in here, if you don't try it, if you don't try that, you're going to end up with a little green, okay? Just the way it'll be. Because yellow and blue make green, so you may, may want green. So let's just try that for a minute. Take a little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of white like that. That's a pretty, let's grab some white here like that. And uh, let's take a little tiny bit of Dawson purple maybe and add to that, a little drop of that, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I've got all that paint on the brush. I'm going to wipe it off like this and just twist it. Then I'm going to come in here like this and start adding that blue. And that's a little bright, so I'm going to put a little brown with it. Just, just now a little bit more of that blue. I'm just going to, there we go. So that's so bright. And what I think I want to get out is some transparent mixing white. This is half zinc, half titanium. Liquitex makes it, but you can make your own. Just buy a bottle of, you know, a jar of 
of uh, zinc white and then a jar of titanium and mix them together if you need a mixing wipe. Okay, so here, let's add a bit of that because it's more of translucent. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start coming over some of this, letting it, letting some of this other color show through, kind of almost a wiggling motion here. Okay, just like this. I'm going to keep, keep moving this around over here. Now we're adding these warmer colors, the blues. A little bit of this color. Okay. Now I might want a little green with that, so I'm going to just take some yellow oxide and add to that, and that will change this color as I paint it. See how it turned a little green on the edges? Okay, that's pretty. A little bit more yellow oxide in here. And um, now I've got this interesting green color I've just introduced, which is sort of pretty. And let's see, let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue now, all by itself. Now, because everything's still wet, that's sort of blended in. You see, that's a little bit darker. It's not, not as dark as the brown, but it is gave it a little bit of darkness. And let's see, how about a little bit of yellow and phthalo blue and white? And you get this sort of a really pretty uh, turquoise blue, and I'll put a little bit of mixing white with that. Now, let's just start bringing in some colors here. And if I sneak this up here by the orange, that's pretty. A little bit up there by the orange. Pull this down here like that. See what I'm painting. So the question is, and actually, believe it or not, it's easier to paint over an old canvas than it is to find a new one to paint on. I promise you it's actually easier. I think I want some of this green in here. Come back to a little blue. Go back to a little mixing white. Oh, that's pretty. You see where I just keep playing with it and then stop. Put something and then stop. And here, here's a little brown. Did you have another question, John? Did you have a question? The village sites, the village series is six by eight. And if you can get the gallery wrap on that, that will be so cute because you can set those up a you're going to have all these little different different little village uh, pictures, you know, coffee shops and tea shops and flower shops and hat shops, and we're going to have all these different little stores, and you can set them around. You can hang them on the wall or set them around, and then we'll finish off with a larger one that's a village square, and these will be, you know, you, we'll just collect them, and we're going to custom do those, okay? So here I'm going to bring in some light now, and here as we're talking. This is just mixing light now. Look, look what happens when you do mixing white. It's not as bright as titanium, but we're just going to just say, here's some light here, like that. Okay, that's pretty. I feel like I need some dark up in here, so I'm going to take a little bit of purple and burnt umber, and I'm going to put some of my brown back. You know, I want a little bit of this brown, so we'll just add some back. Right? And I can do that. Oh, it's acrylics. You can do that. <laughs> How cool is that? You can come in here. Maybe even a little bit of ultramarine blue, because that's pretty dark. Just a drop of that paint and move that in here. Then take a little mixing white, soften that up. And add some color down into here. Now it's, you, can, you can overdo it, but I, I think that, you know, you kind of decide we're going to finish off with some, again, on top of this, with some warm and cool colors, uh, you know, rather some warm colors, some more of the yellows. We'll dry this one more time and want some of this turquoise up here like that and maybe even some white with it. Yeah, lighten this up a little bit. So now, look, I'm pinching my brush. I'm going to deal with this paint. Yeah, I'm just tapping it at this point and allowing this to just, almost like mist. I'm looking for water, you know, mist. Okay, something like this. Do the edges of this. Okay, coming around here like that edges of this, put this back. Now, you have to just do a round brush? No. Oh, this is a good question too. So, what if you were to take a smaller brush? Oh, what do we take here? Um, okay, so here's a, an angle brush. This is a little ruby satin silver brush. Um, I'm telling you what, your brushes make a difference. Uh, you can, you can, um, you, I used to have a, a client, uh, and he would take lessons from me, and, and now he's selling really well, and I love him dearly, but 
we he take classes from me, and he had money, so it wasn't money, but he refused to buy a good brush. He had this really crazy idea that any old cheap brush was fine. And then he would have trouble with his paintings and then wonder why. Now, the, the example I can give you is, and I know some, some people really believe that, just any old stupid cheap brush will work. It Look, if you're a good enough artist, you can probably make stuff work, but most most people aren't good enough artists. And so... Um, so now, now, now they're fighting the brush, okay? They're not only fighting, you know, trying to figure out how to do the painting, they're fighting the brush. It's like, um, and then you think it's you. You think it's you. You don't realize it's your brush, that it, you can't do a straight line or you can't get this, this, this to work because your brush is too soft, it's not holding the paint. And then you think, well, I don't know why I can't make Ginger's tutorials work. Um, if they don't work for me at all. Well, a lot of times it's it's either your paint or it's your brush. And, and it's, I'm, I hate to tell people that because, I mean, look, the least expensive brush you can buy, in my opinion, that's pretty decent, is a S Simply Simmons. They're, they're really good. And they're not as good as the Ruby Satin Silvers, but the Ruby Satin Silvers are more expensive. But they last longer. And I've had people write me since I told them about these Ruby Satin Silvers uh, and these angle brushes, particularly, and the others, the bright brushes, is that, God, they last forever, and they're fantastic. The, but the Simmons are a couple bucks. If some uh, Jerry's, I think, we had them at four fifty a piece at our store, and they were all the same price, but I saw them as low as two fifty at other places. So, I mean, and you can buy those anywhere. Those are good brushes. But if you get too cheap a brush, just because it's on sale, um, is not a good reason to buy a brush. And know your brands and, and practice. And, and you know, a, a brush that I think is good, all right, Maybe you don't like, but I'm saying that it does, um, I've been hearing that. So anyway, so we would argue about brushes, and he would refuse to, to buy a good brush, and then he would, he would, we would just go round and round about why he was having trouble with the painting. But now he's a professional artist selling all over and going to galleries and winning awards. And guess who buys good brushes? He does, you know, but he didn't want to. But I don't know, I don't know, it just... The whole class with him was one, the whole class with this guy was one argument after another. It was extraordinary. All right, I'm using a little purple now. I'm using the Simply Simmons angle brush now. I'm just going to show you. You can do small little delicate work with a brush like this too. You, again, the brown brush is nice. This kind of trash, this, the reason we like the round brushes is because it's sort of, this little movement on most brushes is sort of hard on them. It's a fast way, you know, you can do it with anything, but it's sort of a fast way to wreck brushes. So, ooh, is that kidding? Don't you like the purple? Look, we're adding a little bit of purple here. So, I mean, that's that's the story. And so that um, the question is, well, you know, where do you get, you know, where do you get them? Um, Ruby Satin Silvers are sold online by all the major stores. They've been there forever. They've been around for years. And when I just, I've never found a brush I like better. I'm not saying there aren't some out there. I've just never found it. And I I was happy with I'm happy to tell people about the Simply Simmons brushes because if you're on a budget and you it, they're they're a very good brush. And then you know when people say what can I buy you for you know for a birthday gift? Sometimes a seven dollar brush maybe you don't want to buy a seven or a twenty dollar brush, but you you know you could you could make a wish list and say look I want to add to my collection these are the brushes I would like to own and maybe some family member for some holiday would consider. You know, you know, buy me one of these brushes. Okay, so you see how we're putting in these beautiful colors now. And I'm going to just pull in a little dark here somewhere. And a little bit of purple with it. Okay, and then we're going to dry it. And see, and I can come up with some delicate. Now I'm using this brush to uh, use the angle of it to do some more detail and to, to add some, you know, shape to this. Up until now, we've been just chatting, having a good time. Haven't really been focusing on this too much. And I think I want a little dark over in here and just bring that up like that. Okay, so I'm going to say the dark. And oh, like, let's put a little dark over here to kind of balance this out. Let's put a little dark in here. So this is about layers. If you don't, you won't get mud if you just keep drawing in between. So that if you, you know, kind of put a color down you don't like, that's okay. Just Dry in between and see what you get. Okay, now here's a little, now I'm into this orange. Now, right around, what happens? you got to kind of know what happens when you mix one color in with another. If your brush is dirty, you're going to start touching it. Okay, so let's, let's bring up a little orange up in here like that. 
see what's happening. And look how pretty that looks. So look where your eye just jumped right up to there. Why? Because I'm pinching the brush. Because we introduced a warm orange, which is a complement of blue. And I think that was dry enough to get away with that. Now here's a little bit of cad red medium, even brighter. I'll pull that up in there. Maybe so push that around like this. Now, if I need, to, this is still a little wet. If I needed to put some brighter orange, which I kind of like, ooh, that's pretty. Barely, I can come across this if I barely touch it. Ooh, isn't that cool? I love that. So let's see, let's bring some of this in here like this, barely touching it. Still making these little circles. Do you notice that? Either going back and forth, but the brush is moving constantly. Brush is constantly moving. It just the table's not shaping. The brush is moving. Okay, you know, let's come back around here like this and see. So I'm just going to be blatant about the orange. So maybe I've got a little drop of then, then pinch the brush, put a little drop in, and I'm just going to barely touch that paint. This will be my color surprise. This nice bright piece of orange right here. And over here, I think we had some red somewhere. I'm going to take some. Cad red medium and some napsal crimson and mix those together and make a different red. Okay, and I'm just kind of looking to see where I might want a little bit of this up in here. Now that's pretty bright, okay? So let's put a little white with this. We'll wipe the brush. Now, okay, so the thing is I want that color there, maybe to weave into this one. Kind of come back this way, and it's a little, probably a little more than I want. I'm going to pull some of that over here, just a tiny bit of it. Just bring it over here a little bit. Just pull that down here like that. Now, what do you do with that? Well, what you do is you just take a second and you dry it. Okay, just just take a second. This doesn't take long. Just take a second. Oh, be dry. doesn't take long to dry something. In fact, if you don't have a hair dryer sitting next to your um, next to your canvas, this is not a good plan. You just you know if you have to get up across the room to do it to use your hair dryer, you won't do it. And it you just gotta dry every once in a while. Just get in the habit of painting and drying. So here's a little white, mixing white. Here's a little um, let's see, I think I want a yellow oxide. Yeah. Put some of that on a plate. Normally, I wouldn't be using the silly plates. I'd be using a nice big palette so that I could, could, could mix in the center. All right, I want, I want to come back with a little gold here. All right, like that. Just going to bring some gold back. There, barely touching this now. I'm using the Simply Simmons now. The big brush is kind of gone. I'm kind of, the red's there, but we're kind of, we're kind of letting it go. And might want a little bit of gold coming around this bit right here like that. Now yellow, because it likes to paint over white, when you paint it over something like this, it's automatically going to just sort of tone down anyway. So we're going to just put a little color right there. Maybe I'm going to come over here like this. I want some nice gold right up in here like that. And a little bit of yellow. I'm going to say that there's some kind of color. I'm going to bring that up in here like this and bring this down, blend this in. This is a good exercise in the fact that you learn a lot about blending. If you haven't thought about it like this too much, it's going to, you know, just change brush directions here and just do a couple of, you know, lines down that don't necessarily, aren't necessarily circles now. Now this brush is a little wide for that, so I'm going to do a smaller one. Take a little bit of color here. There we go, like this. And I'm going to bring some, some lines down. Like that. I'm going to come up here like this. Shove this around. Up in here, like that. And blend that in. 
a little red. Again, you can use a small brush, you can use a large brush. You're doing the same brush stroke. Same brush stroke. That's what I'm, that's the whole idea behind this. You're using a same brush stroke. Let's do let's go for some green. Let's just do a little bit of green. I think I still could use some green here. A little bit of light green somewhere. That's down here maybe. Pull it. To make the light green, I did uh, a white, uh, ultramarine, phthalo blue, and a little bit of uh, cad yellow, um, uh, rather yellow oxide, to make that light green. I've just got different layers of that. Let me zoom in again. I think we got too far away. I think we were showing you guys stuff. And uh, it's all about layers. You know what I mean? That's all I can tell you. It's just, you know, where can I barely put a little of this? Put it there, blend it out. I want a tiny bit of this over here. There's a little thing. Where do I want? I'm just looking at the picture. Kind of looking at the other one. Saying, where do I want some color? I think I want some sort of color up in here. Barely touch it. Going back and forth in circles. Over, over a little area like this. You don't need much. And because I'm not rinsing my brush, I get a lot of colors that you wouldn't normally get because uh, it, it's blending on the brush. Okay, so we're going to come up here like this with some dark. Just kind of do a little bit more definition here like that. That's just the brown and ultramarine blue, maybe a little purple. Use the side of the brush here like that. In other words, when you're doing it, you just don't want it all circular. You just It would be nice to have it something else. A, a well-balanced abstract, oftentimes, women have a tendency to do more of this kind of thing, and men have a tendency to do more of the straight lines, and a good balanced abstract would really be a combination of both. It just, um, but I, I've been, for pers for personally, I like this kind of organic, um, very soft, organic, picture you know I really like you know I like that a lot so that for me that's a good you know good abstract um, you know picture I like I like how that looks now let's see where's my other big brush um, here now I've still got this one okay and I've you know still got this brush here and you see it's got a lot of colors on it and I'm gonna just just give you an idea of what we've got so far we, we did pretty good don't you think for um, I'm looking at this going, I might, um, I, think I, I think I got pretty close to this. I mean, not completely, but not, not bad. Because again, you're not going to have, you're not going to do the whole thing, but let's see, maybe I can take a little bit of mixing white and purple and see, just maybe just come up here like this and come over here, just tone something down a bit, okay? A little bit of mixing white, a little bit of dosing purple. Which went where? Here. Okay. White. And maybe I just, just if I wanted it, just kind of come up here like this, like, like steam, you know what I mean? And just, you've got, you've got some areas where you can just barely touch this now. You can add a bit of color, just barely touch it. Okay, and how about over here? Barely touch this. Barely touch this. Just kind of almost a drag it, dry brush over it. And, uh, I'd say that's pretty good, John. What do you think? How do we do with this picture? Pretty good? At least you can kind of get the idea. And then where I, I still need something a little brighter over here. Over in this area, I need something brighter. Let's see if I've got some yellow and red, I can make something. Make a little more of my color. I want something brighter in this spot right there. Bring this around. And maybe a little tiny bit of cad red medium with it. Tiny bit. Wipe it off your brush. Now what, what's happening here? Ooh, that's better. I like that. I'm going to bring it up here like that. Okay. 
All right, and then if I had that there, then maybe I want a little bit here coming down this way, looking to see where else I might want the red, making a little trail, and wipe the brush off like this, make a little trail like this. Okay, I like that. And every time you do these, this will be different. And, you know, this is, again, uh, just sort of a personal thing about how you're going to, you know, make something and paint something and how you're going to do an abstract like this. And, again, they won't be the same. You know, no two, no two of these will be exactly the same, and that's, that's perfect. You know, that's what you want. You do a series of these, you get kind of, when you get into a groove of this, and, um, you know, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Well, I'm going to just use this little brush like that. Darken this line up like this. Okay, just occasionally I'll put a little dark back if I lost some. For emphasis, I might put a little dark back somewhere in here. It's a, well, acrylic's dry darker anyway, but... Let's just see. Let's just pull it almost like little cracks in a rock. All right. Okay. Somebody said, what's the largest surface I've ever painted on? That's a funny question. Uh, years ago, I was asked to do, um, this lady had this, she had this big uh, company where that she sold cows, you know, for the rodeo. She had she, she raised Brahma Brahma cows, I think. Brahma bulls. Yeah, I think what she, yeah, that's what she raised. And um so she had this brochure and the, they were gonna have a they had their their pen at the rodeo and they wanted a giant, giant thing. I don't know. It's like a hundred by seventy two. It was huge. And she asked if I could do it. And of course, you know, I'm going, sure, I can do it. And show me the brochure. And how many do you want this? And absolutely. And so then I got this custom canvas done, done for me. I ordered, you know, got this custom canvas. But then I realized I couldn't get it in the house. Couldn't get it through the door. So then all we had to do is we had to take all the furniture out of the living room and then lay it down on the floor and, um, and re-stretch it. And then I put it up against the wall and painted it. And then I had to take it apart to get it, uh, take it totally apart to get it to her place and rolled up, you know, and then I got it up to her place and it wouldn't go in her house either. We had to assemble it in the barn. And then once she approved it, which was, this was bizarre, okay? And then they had to take it apart and then they hired me to put it back together again uh, when they got to the rodeo. And that's when I realized that I had to, before I accepted stuff like this, I really had to understand how big a hundred, whatever those numbers were. I really said it before I thought about how big that was gonna be. Um, so it's almost like the dumbest thing, but anyway, and then they, then they took it back and it ended up hanging in their office. Um, this thing got taken apart and put together, I don't know, about 10 times in their office, you know, for their brochure for the, um, for the rodeo. It was a, kind of a, it was a photograph of the, their farm and, and cows. And I had duplicated that on this canvas. All right. You see, I'm just playing here a little bit and adding a bit more color. Maybe having this touch here like that, I think that's kind of pretty. I would say that's a pretty good, um, I think that's a fairly successful abstract. I kind of, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think I have to do a lot more. And, and look, you, even though this was pretty big, you know, 8 by 16, we, what did we do this? We did this in an hour. I think John thought this was going to go for an hour and a half. Let me just grab one thing real quick for you. I'll show you something. Uh, hold on. Again, we have a we have no name for these. So there's this contest on our website. We've got to talk about that. Gingercooklive.gallery. Go there. Remember, go to contact us and then vote for the title you like the best. I think the one where here's the two of them. I think they came out pretty well. Don't you guys think so? Very, very similar, right? And you know, they could be. Could you put them together side by side? Would they make a nice pair? Yeah, look at that. You could put these and hang side by side, be very pretty. So anyway, the idea behind this 
is that we needed a title. Some of you had, we, we, over the weekend, some of you guys on Facebook, we had about 25 different titles. So the titles are in. Now you just, if you were one of the ones that gave me a title, now your job is to go over and get your friends to vote for your title. If you, if your title has the most votes, then you will win one of our downloadable lessons on gingercooklive.gallery. You can pick anyone you like. And this is a great contest because you can be anywhere in the world and win this and you just download it to your computer. And then if you were one of the ones that voted for the winning for the winning title, then we will put your name, say if there are 25 people, we'll put your names in a hat and draw out your name and then you will win one of these uh, downloadable uh, videos too. So that's our 4th of July contest. I'm just going to use my pen here and uh, sign my name here, look like that. This is a I'm going to turn, put my glasses on and read it to you. A Uniball Signo pen. Uh, Brandon told me about these from, from Jerry's. You just get them on, um, on Amazon. I really like these. You have to dry them, and then they're pretty waterproof. And you can, I, I like them because they're very fine point, and you can write things really well with them. And they're, they're a lovely little pen. The other pen I recommend people get, if you don't have a Sharpie, uh, you'd think that they, people paid me to say this. I promise you they don't. This is a Sharpie oil painting pen. It's black, and you should try to have a black and a white one called uh, Paint Pincher uh, Oil, and it's, um, it's oil-based, and it dries immediately. So if you were to use it for detail and you didn't like it, you'd have to paint over it because you can't erase it once it's on there. It's a done deal. So, But we would say that, uh, you know, but that I quite like that pen. I think that's a really good one. And I'm going to put my little red slash through my name. There you go, like that. Okay, slash through the name. There's our um, picture. And something like this, I might be tempted very much to do, to take um, string gel and pour all over the top of this and make it look like it was behind glass and get it very shiny. For sure I'd varnish this. For sure I would varnish this piece. Um, and I think that would be, uh, you know, stunning. And... You know, and very, very nice to have. And again, again, if it was on a canvas, I would do the gallery. If it was on a canvas, I'd do a gallery wrap where you could paint around the sides. Because a 16 by 8, the problem with a canvas like this, now I'm going to tell you at the end, is that um, I haven't really seen any frames for this. So you'd have to buy, well, you know how you can buy those uh, metal frames in pieces? And then you put them together. You could buy a, like a black frame like that or brown or gold or something and, and frame it that way. That's how you'd frame this. If someone says, well, how would you frame a piece like this? You buy them in sections, and then you put them together. And, and those are kind of cool. Someday I'll, um, I'll show you guys one of those. And also, this was a picture that's coming up. This is one of our um, July uh, paintings. This is a study in grays, okay? And don't you love this? And this is a uh, study in, 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 this is all just grays, and I used... Um, all the different grays from the golden has all these different grays and I use those colors and just to study in, in grays to do that and that's one of the lessons that we've got coming up on Ginger Cook Live for July. So I'm telling you what, July is jam-packed with stuff. Tomorrow night again we're going to be painting this live, our hotel. Look we've got, let me zoom in on this, this is so cute. Look at the little, we've got the little fireplace in there with the little pots in the window, little flower pots. What you're going to need for this besides a six by eight canvas is you're going to need some tape. You're going to need some artist tape. And uh, this is a quarter, you know, let's see, let's measure this. Quarter inch, I think, is how, how wide this one is. For sure, you're going to want that, you know, quarter inch uh, artist tape. And Cinnamon found some at Michael's that was, um, you could see through. I've never, I've never, I don't own any, but I thought that would even be better than this. But I like artist tape. I use it all the time. So, and a, and a ruler and a triangle are very nice. A bigger triangle than this, but a little triangle. That will just make life so simple. And you probably are going to want a something to draw with. And I would get a little white charcoal pencil or some chalk or something. A watercolor pencil, you know, something to be able to draw on. This is what, and we'll just, to give you a head start on this, the entire canvas is going to be painted burnt umber before we start, okay? So if you want to have a head start on this, you can see how you can paint around the sides. These are like almost a little piece of sculpture when they're done. And uh, burnt umber is the, what we want to be painting on. 
So, any questions before we close? And I'll put our picture back here. Any questions before we close? Okay, this is still interesting. To, so somebody says, how do you just... Okay, so somebody says, how do you decide between the two blues? Which blue do you use, Thaler or Ultramarine? Well, in the regular painting, if I want... Let's just take a painting like this. Okay, uh, you know, I have, you have to know what each blue does. For instance, if you want a, a bright green, you're going to use phthalo and yellow, okay? And if you want a, a, a color like this, which is like the color of your blue jeans, you're going to use ultramarine blue, okay? And we're talking, if you're buying Liquitex, we're talking about phthalo blue, green shade, shade, ultramarine red shade, okay? Not to get too confusing. For instance, the hotel sign is more of a turquoise color. All turquoises are... Um, phthalo blue. So then you're, then you're going to decide what do you think, you know, when do you decide which is which. Well, turquoise blue looks really nice to, next to orange. That's why I put it there. Um, ultramarine blue is more of a red blue. It's a, um, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, you look at your colored wheel, um, you know, it, it, it's nice with orange too. You know, the blues, all of those are kind of nice with, you know, maybe a brighter orange. Um, you'll just look at your color wheel and kind of tell you where you want to put your colors. That's a, just a really good thing. And I found this at the art show this February. And this is not, this is a, called a creative color wheel. And if you slide the, if you, if you slide this around, I've kind of glued it down a little bit. You can slide it around. So here's, Here's some, uh, you know, here's some different shades of color, and it tells you, you know, what other colors would be pretty in your painting if you were using these colors. You can slide it around like this. They're called creative color wheels. This is kind of new, and um, it's not how to mix the color, but you can see. I mean, here's a turquoise, and it likes these, you know, colors in here. And it's you're saying, look, have you thought about using this violet? Here's this turquoise, and these, this would be a pretty painting. And then on the other side. Here's some paler ones that does the same kind of thing. So that, if you're having trouble deciding what to put in a painting, something like this, this painting, for instance, we had the parrot told us the parrot had some phthalo blue in it, and then the darker blue was the ultramarine, almost a purple color. And the reason this picture is so good, which is on our website, everybody, you, you knocked this out of the park, you guys, when you did it, but red and green are complements. In other words, red is opposite, um, you, you know, green on the color wheel. And so when you have a red, look how everybody likes this picture because of that, which is kind of cool. And let's see, what else did we have? We had another one back here. I um, thought we had one more. I was going to show you. I've got to quit putting stuff in paint. That would be good. Let's start with that. But when we did the um, la last week's tra train station, you know, we you know we added a flag. So to, again. That's how you, I would say that's the best example of how you would do it. We got a little bit of this in here, but mostly we're doing the warm and the cool colors. And I think this painting came out kind of cool, no pun intended. And um, that's just kind of where we are with that. So any more questions, John? The question is, what a how good a brush? The, the the brand is how. I'm not familiar with the brush how. I don't I don't know all the brands of brushes. Um, I just know that you want. Oh, a hog. Okay, a hog. Um, okay, a hog hair. Um, yeah, a round hog hair brush. Um, you know, something pretty stiff. It's it's good for this type of painting. Yeah, a stiff. I like the stiffer the stiffer brushes. This this simply Simmons. I don't know what they said this was made out of. Um, it's not simply. It's you know the Robert Simmons. It's a forty R round, and it doesn't say on it what they made. You know, I guess you'd have to look on the website. But I like I like this one, and I've got big ones too. Um, but by the way, if you hire some faux finisher to come fool around and do something like this on a wall, say a couple of colors on a wall. They'll use a brush the size of my fist. I don't think I could lift it and make those circles on the wall. You know, they use a giant brush. You can see them at the art store, a paint store, giant brush. But it's the idea of these, the circular motion and overlapping. That's the trick with this. Circular motion, overlapping. That's what you, that's what you want to do. So, I, 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 having a round brush is, because can you use your other brushes? 
Yeah, you can. Can I use like a Simply Simmons brush and do this? Yeah, but the problem was I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> I could do it. For years, I didn't know about those round brushes, so I just had a couple of Simply Simmons brushes, and I sacrificed them to this. I had no idea there were round brushes out there, and I just love them. Your brushes, your those brushes are like, we're like chefs, you know. Your brushes are like your tools of your of your trades. If you know that, if, for instance, if, you know, I teach at a wine and, and painting parties. I do that in in, um, in several nights a week here in Houston in the evenings. I teach for a company called Merlota Masterpiece, and a lot of my designs are on these wine and paintings, and we do you know simple paintings that anybody can do. And, you know, I show you people step by step. And we have the least expensive brushes money can buy. And oh, and for those kind of paintings, because the paint's different, it's a very kind of thin, watery paint, we can make that work. And we have kind of a soft, round brush, and we can make that work. I can make a lot, make anything work. But I'm saying, if you're talking about using, you know, good acrylic, something in the tube that's a little bit heavier, you're not using the cheap paints, because... You know, companies like that, they have to make a living at it. And so, you know, they're not going to give you the most expensive paints. And most people are there just to party, not to, you know, finish a painting. So, you know, and then, and those brushes wear out fast. I think, I, I don't think, anyway, they're very inexpensive. And he just keeps replacing them. That's what he does. Uh, eventually, he'll just replace them. And still, they will not give you the results in a heavy body paint that you want with like a Simply Simmons or a Ruby Satin Silver angle brush or a regular Ruby Satin Silver. So mo those are my favorites. And you'd think these companies which are paying me, they're not paying me anything to say this. This is just absolutely how I feel about these brushes. So, any other questions? What's the story with the turtle? Okay, so I have a turtle here. Is he cute? He's made out of Dom glass. And I had another turtle. And what I wanted was a brush holder. So I could just put my brush on something. I had, I'm going to take it off for a minute, okay? I had this turtle, okay? I had this one that I got on Amazon. It was a, um, made by a Chinese company. And it had places, like, for lots of things. You could, it's like a brush holder. And I got this on Amazon, and I really liked it. I love it still. I still love it. But the problem is... The camera jiggles where we put it, and I'm using this as a paper, it's really heavy. I'm using this as a paperweight on my camera, so I no longer have access to this until I buy another one. So I actually had this in my stuff. The paint will come off of this. It's just it's just glass in here. I can just rest a rest a brush on it. And it's cute, right? Come on, it's a cute turtle. We get some we get some points for that. We get some points for that. Oh, let me get these brushes out of the way. All right, so get, all right, so we get again. Talk about the contest again. The, we're going to finish off with the contest again. I'm going to finish this off. If you will go to our website, gingercooklive.gallery, and go to contact us. Contact entry form. Contest entry form. It's under the contact us. And vote on the title that you like best. We've got some best. We had 25 people submit our names. And I'll tell you what, there's some marvelous names. And if you were one of the ones and yours got, gets picked, you'll get one of the downloadable videos, okay, for sure. And then I want to remind you that this week's, what is this week's lesson? Oh, yeah, it's the, um, it's the village. If, you're, if you haven't seen it, this week's lesson on our website is 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 the village canal I want to remind everybody about that and of course july is our month where everybody is waiting for stuff to happen and at the end of the month we're releasing the garden steps i want to just hit that again because honestly where can you get with a personal art coach because you know 24.95 a month gets you a personal art coach uh giovanna in italy she sends me stuff almost daily and asks me to critique it and i send her back suggestions she she's one of the ones that really takes advantage of this um, for our members, and I will say, you know, this is great, tone this down or whatever, and write her back. You know, it's like having your art tech, art, an art teacher at, for an email, and you can try us for nine days for nine ninety five. The art coaching doesn't come with that, but if you just, that gives you access to all those lessons, over 160 lessons, that you can just try for nine days, paint your little heart out, and see if you like us. But it's a great thing, and 
we just keep expanding the library so every 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 month becomes an even better deal. That's the only way I can explain it. An even better deal to be a member of GingerCookLive.Gallery. And at some point, we will close off the membership. Oh, you didn't know that. Yeah, at some point, well, for, for personal art coaching, at some point, we will reach the maximum number of people I can feel like I can easily handle for art coaching. And after that, you'll still be able to access lessons and we'll have a different price structure. But right now, you're still, the new people that are with us now are being grandfathered in at twenty four ninety five a month and nineteen ninety five for seniors or the military. So you cannot beat that. That is the least expensive, the least, it's practically free art lessons as far as I'm concerned on the internet. And, it, and it's a great deal. So I hope you guys uh, take advantage of that. And also, we appreciate likes and um, happy comments. And enjoy painting abstracts. Again, try this technique. It's fun.